Why are Catholic activists in Africa rallying against a seemingly innocuous international agreement? What is it about the Samoa Agreement that has ignited such fervent opposition? In recent weeks, a wave of protest has swept across Nigeria, driven by Catholic activists under the banner of Citizen GO Africa. Their demand, a complete withdrawal from the Samoa Agreement, a 403-page cooperation pact between the European Union and 79 countries from Africa, the Caribbean, and the Pacific. But what has spurred this intense opposition? At the heart of the outcry is a fear that the Samoa Agreement, signed by Nigeria in June, undermines the nation's cultural values and legal framework. Citizen Geo Africa, a prominent organization advocating for the preservation of family values, argues that the agreement promotes abortion and LGBTQ ideologies, issues that starkly conflict with Nigeria's conservative societal norms. The calls for Nigeria to withdraw the agreement reflect a deep-seated concern for protecting the country's legal framework, cultural integrity, and fundamental values, reads the petition launched by Citizen Geo Africa on July 9. The activists point to specific articles within the agreement as problematic. For instance, Article 2.5 mandates the promotion of a gender perspective and gender equality, which critics argue is a guise for legitimizing homosexuality, transgenderism, and abortion. Similarly, Article 29.5's call for universal access to sexual and reproductive health services is seen as a potential gateway for controversial practices like abortion and LGBT activities. Compounding the issue is a surge of misinformation that has further polarized public opinion. Reports falsely claimed that the Samoa Agreement forced Nigeria to recognize LGBT rights in exchange for financial support from advanced societies. This false narrative has been weaponized by opposition groups to attack the government, accusing President Bola Tinubu and Vice President Kashim Shetima of betraying their religious principles. Despite clarifications from legal experts and the government, the damage has been done. Nigerian lawyer Ugo Egbujo emphasized that international agreement cannot override domestic laws without approval from the National Assembly. The only way to domesticate a law is to bring it to the National Assembly, where members must deliberate and vote to adopt it. Without doing this, it isn't a law, nor is it justiciable, nor enforceable, he explained. The misinformation has had dire consequences for Nigeria's LGBT community already living in fear due to the country's stringent anti-LGBT laws. Hate speech and attacks have surged, forcing LGBT groups and human rights organizations to go underground. We came under attack with our details posted online. We had to shut down our website and are trying to protect ourselves, said Bishola Kandi a senior programs officer for a local LGBT group. Social media platforms have become battlegrounds with female Nigerian TikTokers and other users facing homophobic abuse for perceived sexual orientation. This wave of online harassment has further marginalized an already vulnerable community. Citizen Go Africa and other critics view the Samoa Agreement as a form of neocolonialism an attempt by Western powers to impose foreign ideologies on Nigeria. The pressure from European countries to sign the pact is seen as coercive, infringing on Nigeria's sovereignty and cultural identity. The attempt to coerce Nigeria into agreeing to terms at odds with its cultural beliefs and legal framework has been met with resistance from those who advocate for the protection of Nigerian identity and autonomy. The activists argue the Nigerian government has maintained that its decision to sign the Samoa Agreement was driven by economic considerations, not a compromise on its anti-LGBT stance. Economic Planning Minister Abubakar Liu explained that the agreement was signed after extensive reviews and consultations by the country's inter-ministerial committee. The government insists that the agreement aligns with Nigeria's laws and commitments. The controversy surrounding the Samoa Agreement underscores the complex interplay between international cooperation and domestic values. 
It highlights the challenges faced by nations like Nigeria in balancing global partnerships with the preservation of cultural integrity. As the debate rages on, one thing remains clear. The call for Nigeria to withdraw from the Samo Agreement has become a focal point for broader discussions about sovereignty, identity, and the influence of foreign ideologies. In the world increasingly interconnected by global agreements and international cooperation, the tension between local values and external influences is a recurring theme. For Nigeria, the Samoa Agreement has become a lightning rod for these tensions, reflecting deep-seated fears and genuine concerns about cultural preservation. As Catholic activists and other concerned citizens continue to voice the opposition, the Nigerian government faces the delicate task of navigating these contentious issues while safeguarding the nation's interests. What do you think? Should Nigeria withdraw from the Samu Agreement to protect its cultural values? Or should it embrace international cooperation despite potential ideological clashes? Share your thoughts in the comments below.